Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Future Dreams Podcast and Interviews. Today's special guest is one of my all-time favourite voice actors, Mr. John Swazzy. So, good afternoon, John. First off, I'd like to talk about The Boy and the Beast, as it's my favourite movie of all time. So, John, how did you get to hear slash audition for The Boy and the Beast? So, I didn't know anything about the movie until I got called by um, the director, Mike McFarland, up at Funimation. And he called and asked if uh, I'd be interested in auditioning for this role. Well, of course, anytime you get asked to audition, you're always thankful and grateful. Um, but I didn't really know anything about the movie. So, uh, what I decided I would do, though, is do a little homework or research. So I went and started looking up stuff uh, about Momoru Hosada online. And, uh, of course, I'd already done Summer Wars. And uh, so I was a little with him, but didn't quite know the extent of, you know, he's like the Steven Spielberg of anime, you know. And uh, I uh, started, you know, researching and learning as much as I could about uh, Hosada. Uh, about the show itself, The Boy and the Beast, and about even the voice actor who originally did it. Um, and really just kind of dug in and, and tried to find out as much as I could. Um, that's always one way that when we're finding a voice for uh, a character, I, we like to listen to the Japanese actor and, and not mimic them, but, but sort of find their, um, you know, kind of get in their zone. And uh, that's what I did uh, on this one, and it worked out well. It was a good voice for me in my wheelhouse and something I was comfortable with and um, absolutely had a blast recording it. So I was very, very grateful to be cast as Kumatetsu. Do you have a particular favorite scene or moment in the movie? Um, the, uh, the, um, the, the filming of it was... Uh, not the, film, the recording of it was delightful. Um, but as far as a favorite scene goes or a favorite thing to record, I, I really enjoyed the whole process. Uh, I was up, we recorded over like three days of 18 or eight hour days. So it was about 24 hours of recording and um, really just was able to pour my heart into it. One of the things I liked about doing it that way was, a lot of times if you get cast in something and you record, you may have a lot of hours. Well, if you, you know, you may record five hours today and three hours tomorrow and then come back a week later and record five hours and, you know, stuff like this. And the really cool thing about the way we did it was we knocked it all out in one day. So I was really able to get into the mindset and the, the character of Kumitetsu and, and really, um, really find his voice and, and really focus on it. But one of the things that I think I enjoyed the most was uh, his, um, you know, he's so set in his ways, um, but he, you know, he finally, he finds a part of him that he didn't know was there, uh, a compassionate side that he didn't know he had, um, or if he did know, if he did know he had it, he had buried it a long time ago. And uh, that was a fun moment, kind of, you know, the self-sacrifice and, the, you know, doing something for the benefit of somebody else and not just yourself. You know, it's a good life lesson. And it was a it was a great moment for him. Wow. That, that is so inspiring. So what did you like about voicing Kamatetsu? Well, like I said, he was he was really within my wheelhouse. You know, when when a, we're looking at uh, voicing a character, you know, we usually listen to the Japanese performer first, mm. and because they're the ones that created the original voice or the original vibe to the character, and um, we we try to stay kind of in that realm, but. Uh, With him, it was, I mean, I got asked to audition because it was something that was 
within my zone. I mean, I, I you know, it, it wasn't like um, something that I wasn't, you know, accustomed to doing. So that voice is sort of like this. It's a little rough, a little deeper, a little growly. Uh, that's something that I'm very adapt to do, adept at doing. So um, I love the fact that it was, that's where we landed with it because it was something that is, uh, um, was comfortable for me to do. It wasn't a stretch for me to do it. Do you know what I mean? Did you know that Boy in the Beast has a manga series? I don't, I, I really don't recall, to be honest with you. That was so long, it was several years ago. Um, no, no, I did it now. I can't really remember everything I did as far as the process to audition, but, um, you know, usually it's the other way around. It's, uh, anime comes after a manga. It's usually based on a manga. This, uh, somebody like Momura Hosada or Miyazaki, you know, they're filmmakers. So they, they made the film and then the manga came after it. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't checked it out. I'd like to though. I totally recommend you read the manga, but you have to do Kamatetsu's voice while reading the manga. I'm sure I would. Kamatetsu is my favorite character in the movie. Is he your favorite? He's my favorite character in in my career. I mean, I, I you know, people ask me all the time, like, who's your favorite voice to do? And, you know, I like All for One, and I like Undertaker, and lord death and i mean i like a lot of it but that holds a that holds a very special place in my heart the sad part was it was not an ongoing you know series that went on for seasons it was just a film just a, a one-time movie so uh but it was definitely my favorite part to ever play in my opinion it's mamoru soda's best movie so far do you agree worked on summer wars and that was a fun movie um but this one just had such a it's 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 magical it's heartwarming it's funny it's serious it's tragic it's you know it's got everything i mean it really does and the artwork is really beautiful i mean it's it's not only a beautifully told story it's a beautifully animated story as well honestly john i couldn't agree more also, John, I'm aware that Funimation was going to do a premiere in LA. Is this true? Yeah, I, re I remember that vaguely. Um, yeah, it was. It was uh, one of the things that was kind of exciting for me was uh, Funimation was going to do a big red carpet rollout, do a premiere showing in LA, and all this, and that all kind of fell by the wayside for one reason or another. But I was really hoping that it was, you know, going to have that kind of premiere. But it didn't, unfortunately. But, uh, oh well. I'm sorry to hear that, John. But I hope we get another opportunity in the near future. I hope so. Thank you, John. That concludes part one of Boy and the Beast. Moving on to part two. Part two is about the great John Swazi. So, John, what inspired you... And how did you become an actor? Well, I was uh, 15 years old um, and on a trip with my family to New York. And we were at a Broadway play called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I don't know what it was, but it was, it was the most electrifying show I had ever seen in my life. I saw some other Broadway shows uh, that same trip. Uh, Pirates of Penzance, which I was sort of like, eh, you know, whatever. And then Crimes of the Heart uh, by Beth Henley, which actually I did love. It was not a musical. It was a straight up play. But I thought it was really good. And But it was that one, the first one, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Um, and it just, it, it set me on fire. I mean, I just, I told my parents, like, like okay, this is what I want to do. I wanted to be a marine biologist before that, and all of a sudden now I want to be an actor. And they were just like, you want to what? And uh, so I came home and uh, went to, you know, I was in high school, and I immediately auditioned for the next play that came up and got a, got cast in it. And uh, just realized that I had a, an affinity and a, certainly a great love for doing this. 
and um, went off to college and got my degree, came back to Houston and uh, started doing theater and comedy and improvisation and films and commercials and just loving every minute of it and was actually uh, was, did move out to L.A. for a little bit in the early 90s and came back and was still working here, making a living doing voiceovers and stuff like that. And then in 1997, uh, just gotten married, been married about a year. And I ran into somebody who said I needed to get into this thing called anime. And I was like, you know, what's anime? And they were like, it's Japanese animation. I'm like, well, I don't speak Japanese. And they're like, no, no, we dub it into English. And I said, okay. So I auditioned for a show for a company here in Houston called ADV Films and um, got cast in a show called Golden Boy and um, just happened to stay with that company and kept auditioning and getting cast. And, you know, I would get, I sort of developed, uh, or I, I sort of became known for being able to do a lot of different voices. And so I got cast in a lot of different shows. Um, and there weren't that many actors doing it. So I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and, and kind of grew with this company, ADV Films, that has now become Sentai Films. And of course, along the way, there was Funimation and the Luma Tunes for a little while and Rooster Teeth and Gearbox and, you know, Okratron and just a host of studios that are all here in Texas. And, uh, you know, then branched into L.A. a little bit, did some stuff out there for them. And um, so it it it's just been a wonderful journey. Um, and now I'm a full time director at Sentai, which used to be ADV Films. Uh, but now I, I still voice act, of course, but I uh, um, now direct full time as well. So between acting and directing, which one is the hardest and which one do you prefer? <laughs> well, it's it's, you know, that's a, a weird question because I've been doing it so long um, that it almost is second nature, both of them. Uh, with voice acting, um, the main thing is finding the right emotional levels for the characters you're playing and being able to listen to your director and take direction. But again, I've been doing it so long, I can, I sort of, you know, can get a feel for what they want. And if I don't do what they want, they tell me what they want, I can deliver that without any problem. Um, but the other thing on the directing side is, um, I've, you know, so many of us have been doing this so long that you just, it's, I direct best by just sort of staying out of the actor's way. Um, if, if an actor is like, you know, struggling, I'll help them along. But, you know, if I have Lucy Christian or Monica Rial or um, David Matranga or somebody like that in a show, you know, there's not a whole lot of directing I need to do because they know exactly what they're doing and they know, you know, the best way to do it. So, um, but, so they're not difficult, but I certainly enjoy them equally. Wow, that sounds awesome. It it must be amazing to work with a lot of great and diverse actors. Mm -hmm. You're so inspiring. To me, it sounds like you have a lot of fun. Well, it's a, it is it's fun, um, and you know the whole industry itself is becoming way more prolific, uh, and a lot more people are into it. And you know, uh, we meet people all the time that want to. You know, how do I get into it? How do I do it? And it's it's uh, it's the same with anything. I mean, you have to start somewhere. But I, I sometimes sense that, you know, people don't really realize that um, people like me or Lucy Christian or Monica Rial or Chris Sabat or, you know, any of these folks. We've been doing this for 20 something years. You know, we're not just we didn't just go hey, I want to be a voice actor and do anime and then just get huge <laughs> overnight. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. So um, it's it's been interesting uh, for us. You know, we look back on all the stuff we've done and, and we're just amazed at where we are. Um, but we see a lot of people coming in that are good. 
there's nothing wrong with them. They're very talented and that kind of thing. But they, they seem to want, you know, I want to be famous now or I want to be successful now. And they don't understand that it, it just takes time. You know, there's no, no substitute for that. So what are your plans for the future, John? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a couple projects. Uh, one project I'm not allowed to talk about, um, but it will be very cool when it comes out. And everyone's going to be, I think, I hopefully be very, very excited. Um, but as on the directing side, that's on the acting side. On the directing side, um, I'm uh, working on a show called Two Love Brew, which is a silly little anime that about aliens and high school kids and a lot of boobs and panty shots. So a lot of fan <laughs> services. Uh, uh, but I did just finish directing uh, a show called Babylon, which I think is about to come out. Uh, and worked uh, with another director, Mike Himoto, on a show called Hero Mask, which is also coming out. I believe both of those are going to be on High Dive. Um, if you go to highdive.com, uh, you can, it's a streaming platform that's uh, for anime. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've got those, and um, uh, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm sure there's something. So this leads me to my final question, John. Do you have any advice for upcoming actors and directors? Uh, like, like I said, like I said, the most important thing of all is um, acting. It's acting is the big thing. So if you're interested in wanting to get into this, find an acting class. Contact a, a theater or your school or anybody and just find out about acting classes because... Uh, that's the most important thing you can do uh, if you want to get into this industry. Um, you know, you can get demos made, you can get equipment, you can do all that. But at the end of the day, if you don't, you know, if you don't have the acting classes under your belt to show you, think of it like this. If, if you want to play the guitar, the first thing you have to do, actually, you don't even have to do this, but the first thing you would probably do is go buy a guitar. But what you have to do is, is practice and practice and practice and practice. So I guess the, instead of saying you want to play a guitar, let's say your goal is to be a, a singing guitar player. Well, you have to do things before you become that. And one of those things is you have to practice. You know, you can go buy a guitar and sit on a stage with it, but that doesn't mean you're going to be any good. So you have to learn how to do it. Well, it's just like that with voice acting. You have to learn how to do it. You have to learn the, the, uh, the processes and the, the, the skill. You know, it's a skill. That's all it is. It's like anything else, it's a skill. And if you learn how to do it, you can do it. But it, it just takes time, like you said. So, yeah, if you're interested in doing this, you definitely want to go, um, uh, go to an acting class. And I will say, uh, there's also things, you, other things you're going to want to do. Uh, if you go to my website, johnswayze.com, you can download for like $25, I think. I have a uh, series of videos on becoming a voice actor and what you need to do and all that kind of stuff. So you can certainly check that out as well. Thank you so much, John, for agreeing to do this with me. It means so much. My pleasure. Thank you.